my check one two one two how you doing okay how's it going um recently i actually uh, met up with my friend pete and i brought my seeds over to his house so we can uh, trade some seeds and uh we also start to look through some of the seeds that we plan on growing this year so um yeah this is just going to be a short video of uh some of the things we can grow this year you know pulling out the seeds and looking at them is always a good time so uh yeah check it out Check these out. Got this button. Just to look at some of the shit we need to grow this year. I actually got that from, uh, I forgot where I got that from. Uh, but it's called Batch's Button. It's also, it's an edible plant. Calendula. Sunset Possum. That's interesting. It's a native toothache plant. I'm gonna try that again. I don't know how to pronounce this one. Uh, it was the C-H-R-Y-S-A-N-T-H-E-M-I-M. -M. Yeah, but it's an edible flower. I'm just going to start getting into edible flowers. I don't have too many edible flowers, but I'm going to start exploring flowers, you know, because flowers are important because they help the bees. These are all marigolds. I'm going to, I got like so many marigold seeds. I might as well just go sick planting marigolds everywhere. They help. That's Sikkim Cucumber 2013. That's uh, that's actually yours um, from the Sikkim Cucumber that you gave me. Nice. Yeah. Heirloom, save your seeds. Cosmos Flower, got these from Mark. Another good flower. Good for bees, beneficial insects, all about those insects that help you. The Cosmos Flower is from last year. Mizuna. I gotta grow the Mizuna. Look how many Mizuna seeds I have. That is awesome. It's another flower, red clover. It's actually a nitrogen fixer. The plant is not edible, but uh, red clover, it's uh, you know, pulls nitrogen from the air and it releases it through their roots. So if you put it around plants that are, you know, are nitrogen loving plants, like you know, cabbage is a nitrogen loving plant. So this is a nitrogen fixer. So it's putting nitrogen into the soil, which you can use that. So I actually got this, uh, it was actually the time when we went to Brooklyn. We went to Brooklyn and uh, there was like this, uh, this kind of event going on. It was like a lot of cool stuff going on in Brooklyn. But um, a friend gave me the seeds, these a bunch of seeds. So I'm gonna use those red clovers this year. I'm gonna plant a lot of cool stuff. I'm gonna have a very diverse looking garden. This is the uh, salsify. And it's funny because I started off with just a little less than a handful of seeds and this is the seeds I collected last year so it's all about saving your seeds and that's just one that's just like what was it four plants five plants I got all these seeds um, just imagine if I had like a nice patch I would have seeds to just give out for free you know bags of it extra dwarf bok choy Okra. I'm going to grow okra this year. You know, last year I wanted to grow okra, but I just made, you know, I waited too long to make the decision to grow the okra. So I have a few varieties of okra I'm going to play with. You know, I'm not sure about the cross pollination with these plants because I want to, um, I want to keep these uh, breeds pure. But I don't know. This is pretty pretty cool. But I can go across a few. It's hard to make a choice really. But I'm going to plant a lot of okra. The okra is pretty expensive, and I have a few varieties, and they're from, I got those okra varieties, the seeds I got about two years ago, so I don't want them to kind of get old on me, and their germination rate, you know, lowers because, you know, years on seeds, seeds, so might as well just germinate them and get fresh seeds from them, and eat a ton of good fresh vegetables in the process. So I have, I have one more variety of okra, it's called Old Country Red, or something like that. This is Eagle's Pass. This is a short variety of okra. Um, gonna try to grow that. I love okra. I'm gonna have this one. This is a emerald. It's called an emerald. This variety. It's a green variety of okra. And then I have this. This is a. Uh, it's called a Perkins Long Pod. Perkins Long Pod. <laughs> well, that's uh yeah. And then you have uh, okra jing orange. 
it's a red variety of orange, it's an Asian, Asian variety of orange. Variety of orange. <laughs> I mean a variety of okra. Uh, this is a really cool variety of squash, it's called, if I'm pronouncing this right, I think I am, but I may be wrong because um, I'm just going off of my uh, own pronunciations. And this is a Pippian from Tuxpin. That's how I'm reading it. But it's a uh, cool variety of uh, squash. And uh, it's an Asian variety too. But the seeds look really cool. I dropped one. They have like this outer green and the, uh, the white is uh, pretty interesting, but the cool thing about this is they're actually grown for these seeds. It's not mostly grown, it's not mostly grown for the flesh, but um, the flesh is good, but the seeds is what, uh, what this is actually grown for. So, uh, I kind of, I'm gonna use Google real quick and uh, I'm gonna look that up. Um, I've only seen pictures, but it would be cool to see it in person. There's a picture, look good. See, that's how the flesh looks. This guy's, uh, you know, I guess he cut it open. Really cool. Uh, yeah. I guess there's not too many pictures on there, so maybe I can bring you a pretty cool video. Yeah. Bring you some cool video in this cool variety of squash. You know, do my best. Gonna go hard with the beans. I think I'm gonna just plant this whole uh, bag. This says it contains about 40 seeds. That's a lot of beans, man. Yeah. But this is a Kalima bush bean. See that? Kalima bush. And there's a picture, and that's what the seed looks like. It's pretty cool. Good for you. Very, very productive. That's why I do like beans, actually, because they give you so much food. And then, uh,. Hopefully I can grow it at the plot because uh, I have those 2 by 2s I have a ton of 2 by 2s I can build some trellises and grow mad in these. Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. Given to me by my good friend Pete here. Yeah. This is fenugreek. Fenugreek. Uh, it's a uh, it's an Indian herb actually. And, uh, Super good for you, super medicinal, and the uh, seeds are actually used for seasoning. Fenugreek. Maybe grow those in containers, possibly. More likely to grow those in containers than I am to grow them in uh, the ground. So, let's see how that goes. I know the sprouts are good too. People, you know, they sprout them and they, they eat the sprouts. The wild thyme, I just got this from Baker's Creek. Now I got this, uh, the cardoon. It's actually a pink variety of cardoon, and um, I have never tasted cardoon. It's my first time growing cardoon, and uh, let's see how that goes. We should, I'm not gonna look at that up and show you what these look like, because these pictures are not too descriptive, you know? Like those car, you know, crayon colored pictures that they have on these packets. It's like, bro, give me some pictures. You know? Looks like a celery. I never tried it, but um, it looked interesting to me, so I'm gonna grow it. I'm probably gonna grow these at the plot also. Of them. I'm gonna try them. Actually, I'm gonna try them in my backyard and at the plot. But you know, the plot has full sun, so you know that goat manure we just put into that soil. It's gonna be pretty fertile. Green Globe Improved and Purple Road Magna, and that's the scientific name right there. It's uh, it looks like cyanar if you ask me. <laughs> Whatever that says, you know, I don't speak Latin. And then, uh, so the cardoon and the, and the artichoke are very similar. Let's see if their seeds are similar. Yeah. That is the artichoke seed right here. And then right here, we have the cardoon. Very similar. Look at these guys. It's pretty cool. That's a weird. Look at these. These are peach seeds. Orange, yellow, and moon and stars. I actually had moon and stars before. Um, and what I'm going to be giving you is uh, the Hamby. So, you know, they don't really show the picture in here, but it's a large variety of watermelon. And uh, Golden Midget. It's a dwarf variety of watermelon with the uh, yellow skin. Gem, is that pronounced right? Kolb's gem? Yeah, that's what this is. It's a large variety. 
It's huge. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee Red. I never grew paint ups before, so I'm pretty excited to grow these. Yeah. This should be a pretty interesting experience watching the peanut plants uh, grow because I've never seen peanut plants grow and this is my first time growing them, so. It should be interesting. Tennessee Red. Tennessee Red. As the variety of peanut I will be attempting to grow this year. 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 <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, I really know how to explain this thing. That's why you're gonna do it. This is like some device that you use to make paper pots, you know, like disposable pots. Well, they're not disposable, but they're gonna be used as compost also. But you use newspaper and uh, this little device here that uh, belongs to my friend Pete, and he's actually gonna show you what we're gonna be doing with this. It's pretty cool. All right, here we're gonna show you the Potter Factory. And it makes, or you can use it to make uh, compostable pots in varying sizes. So here we have a newspaper. It's one of those smaller ones. So to get it to size, I only have to rip it in half once. Then I use the larger portion. After I fold it in half, I wrap it around and use a piece of tape so that it can hold its structure. And then I choose what size I want it to be, depending on how much I tuck in. You know, I can change the size. So if I want it to be rather small or medium, I can uh, leave that much, throw that much slack in there. And this is the size of a pot. And there we have a compostable pot made out of recycled newspaper. Doesn't get any more eco-friendly than that. Cause we're definitely not done with the frost, but I'm gonna try to grow some of this endive. See, in the, my backyard, I'm gonna try to use mostly for like greens. Corn salad, uh, pepper crust, red Malbar spinach. It's a nice guy. Uh, I'm not gonna plant that now. Actually, that's actually it's better suited for hot environments. But um, these are like the cool weather plants. This is the red leprechaun. I grew that one year. Southern giant curled mustard green. I love mustard greens. Mustard greens are really good. I'm not gonna grow that. Um, definitely gonna mess around with the bok choy. I'm not too crazy about the chives, so I might stay away from the chives. Yeah, this is plant made. So mustard greens, um, lettuces, things of that nature. You know, I'm gonna try to grow greens. Actually, uh, just planted some Jerusalem artichokes. I don't have many Jerusalem artichokes, but I had maybe about five pink crispy Jerusalem artichokes bulbs left. So I'm probably not gonna grow a lot of Jerusalem artichokes, but I may have some plants. Um, if I do get my hands on that stuff they call money, um, maybe I can uh, buy some. But yeah, you know, I'm gonna start planting, you know. I've been going to the plot every once in a while when I get a chance and doing a little work here and there, but, uh, you know, it's early in the season, so it's a lot of work to do. And um, I will be uh, planting a lot of things in these uh, next coming up weeks, these weeks that are coming. I'm gonna plant a bunch of things. So um, hopefully everything goes all well, you know. Hopefully the warm stays around. It was really nice today. Hopefully it sticks around a little bit, you know. So um, yeah, stay tuned.